video, we looked at the Healing Brush tool and how it could be used to correct imperfections and blemishes in your photographs. Well, in this video, we're going to explore one of my favorite tools, the Clone Stamp. Now, the Clone Stamp works slightly different to the Healing Brush in that the Healing Brush will take a predefined sample area and combine it with the affected area to come up with a happy medium. Whereas the client stamp will take that same predefined sample, clone it, and then completely replace the affected area that the clone stamp is applied to. So the client stamp is extremely precise and great for recreating fine detail that's been lost or missing in a photograph, and is one of the primary reasons that I prefer working with it on older photographs. Whereas the healing brush, on the other hand, is actually great for portraits, fixing up uneven skin tones, wrinkles, and even blemishes. So the first thing we need to do is actually go and find the clone stamp. So if we go across to the tools menu on the left hand side of your working space and just navigate down, you'll find it looks like a little stamp icon there. Or you can actually press S on your keyboard to bring up the clone stamp as well. Now you'll also notice if you just hold down the mouse that you'll find there is actually a pattern stamp tool. Uh, we're not particularly interested in using that for this particular um, tutorial, but it's simply a way of actually applying patterns to your images using a stamp tool. Um, but for this particular tutorial, we're going to concentrate on the clone stamp. So we're going to select the clone stamp. Now you'll notice up the top here, you have some very similar options to that of the healing brush tool. Now the first thing essentially you need to actually do is go and choose a brush tip size. So we go to this little icon and actually select it. And then we can choose the size of the brush that we're actually going to be using and also the hardness of the brush. Now just remember when using a, uh, a brush size with a lower hardness value that the outside edges are going to be rendered as sort of um, diffused or uh, blurred. So it's not going to be distinguishable, but if you have really fine detail, then you're actually going to lose some of the detail of the areas you're applying the clone stamp to. So you really want to make sure that you sort of understand that and uh, are aware of it when you're actually making your adjustments. Now, after you actually set a brush tip size, what you essentially want to do is go and set a couple of the other options. You have mode, which essentially will display all of the types of blending modes that um, you've seen previously with regards to layer blending modes. So you can play around with all of them, uh, except it doesn't have the replace uh, blending mode that's actually in the healing brush tool. So normally I tend to leave that on normal, but you can actually go through and actually play around with some of them such as multiply and uh, even overlay, they're quite useful. So from there we have opacity. Now opacity is simply going to determine the density of the adjustment and the transparency of the adjustment they're actually going to be applying to your image. Uh, in most cases, I'll never have this actually at 100% except for on solid areas. So with these particular images here, with these uh, solid frames, I'd actually want to actually reproduce a sampled area as a solid because I don't need to actually sort of build up those levels uh, when working with the, the clone stamp. So what I tend to do would leave that at 100%. But ordinarily when I'm working with an image like this, I'd actually set it lower. So I'd probably have the opacity set to somewhere between you know, 50% and maybe 75% and for really fine detail uh, work where I really want to be careful with what I'm doing, then I, I tend to reduce the opacity even further. So it essentially requires more clicks and you're sort of building up the information as you're actually working. But for this example, we're just going to leave this set at 100%. Uh, From here, we have the flow of the, uh, the clone stamp. So you can choose to actually reduce the flow rate for each stroke. That can be especially useful. So you tend to sort of knock that back maybe to around 80%, slightly less. Um, but once again, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna leave this at about 100%. From here, we have the aligned sample checkbox, or sorry, the aligned checkbox. Now, aligned simply allows you to, um, by having it checked, it means that you're actually sampling pixels continuously without actually losing um, your current sampling point. So your sampling point is essentially, you'll actually hold down 
the uh, alt key on a PC or an option key on a Mac. And you'll actually choose a point. See how I've got a little crosshair that's appeared? You'll actually click on a specific point on the image and that's the sampling point. And then you'll actually go and apply that to another area on the image. So that's essentially sort of how that works. And beside the uh, aligned checkbox, we have the sample. Now sample simply allows you to actually specify where you're actually going to be sampling from. So you could be sampling from your current layer or your current and below layer or all layers. So if you have multiple different layers with multiple backgrounds, um, then essentially you want to either be working on one of them or you can choose to work on multiple. In most cases, I'll tend to leave this set just to my background copy. So if you remember in the past video, when doing photo restoration, I always like to actually reproduce the background layer just so I retain the original uh, image so that I don't have to uh, back. If, if I need to backtrack in the future, I've got the original um, data there from which I can work on if I make any mistakes along the way. Because as you're probably aware, you only have a certain number of history states in Photoshop um, and they can be actually changed and set to different numbers, but I think the default's set at about 20 history states. So after you do about 20 clicks with a clone stamp, um, you'll actually, you actually won't be able to go back uh, unless you go right the way back to your original uh, starting point, which is often not what you really want. So that's primarily uh, the majority of the settings that you're actually going to be utilizing when using the clone stamp. There is also the, um, the clone source, and that is this little icon up here. If we click that, you'll notice over in the right hand corner, we have a little clone source panel, and they give you five uh, clone uh, icons that are here and essentially it allows you to set pri uh, five different settings so um, you can specify so on this one you could have one set of settings and then on this one you can have another set of settings and essentially it'll allow you to choose to offset the sample area that you're actually applying to your image or and even change the width the height the angle and a range of other options but in most cases you're probably really not going to be utilizing this that much unless you're um a, you know a an, a, an advanced user of the clone uh, stamp tool. Now, the next thing we're going to just take a look at is actually how it works. So essentially, we're going to actually go and apply the clone stamp to this image. And as you can see here, I've got the before and afters of the same image that I worked on. And um, you can probably notice that there are quite a few hours gone into actually restoring this particular photo for a client of mine. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you actually start enlarging your image is that when selecting the clone stamp you will need to actually select a predefined sample area so you need to actually choose your brush size uh, hold down alt on a pc or option on the mac choose an area that is uh, representative of what you believe the area should be so i've got marks on here but in in reality it should be very close to this sort of tone here so what i can essentially do is select this tone hover over this particular area here and then click on it. And what you'll notice is that it's actually um, replaced that entire blemish on that image. So you can go around the entire image essentially just replacing areas of the image just by making clicks. Um, so it is, you can be extremely quick with this and actually do quite some amazing things. Now, one of the advantages of using the clone tool is that it actually does recreate uh, identical detail. So, for example, if I wanted to actually uh, remove this particular blemish here, but I wanted the same line, what I could do is just by aligning this information up here, I could select this area here, and then I can actually recreate the edge of the photograph here without too much effort. So, it's, it's actually reproduced the detail at the top here and actually replace the area that's been affected. So that's where it becomes really handy, especially when you're working uh, around really fine detail like faces here. So for example, if I was to actually, um, actually try and restore this area here, what I'd want to do is actually keep the jaw bone line here and also the neckline and also the finer um, sort of shadow detail that's in her hair there so when I'm actually correcting I don't want to um, I don't want to lose any of that so I've got to be careful as I'm actually working my way around to actually retain that type of information so it is try it is quite tricky but um, you sort of get the hang of it after after a while 
And as I say, it's, it's, it's something that takes time to learn. So if you get a little frustrated, don't worry, as it'll take a little bit of time just to get used to the tools and how they work. But the, the benefits of being able to restore photos uh, are amazing because it, it, it does really give me a lot of joy uh, to be able to take an old photograph and restore it like it was new um, and actually be able to present that to someone that, that the look on their face is quite special and amazing. So that's essentially the clone stamp in Photoshop. Um, give it a whirl, give it a try. I think you'll really enjoy using it and uh, we'll see you in the next video.